As the name suggests, stationary waves are in fact stationary. The energy is localized into one location, uh, but how are they formed? So in this video, we're gonna look at definitions behind stationary waves, um, how can you identify different features um, and the equations as well. So a stationary wave, you might have seen this practical done before, um, a piece of string with a vibration generator and a signal generator. The vibration generator generates these waves that travel to the one end and reflect back and they form shapes like this. So how are stationary waves formed? Well, they're formed when you've got two waves that are traveling in opposite directions. Now on the string, that means it's reflecting back. It doesn't have to be like that, um, but they're traveling in opposite directions in the same medium. So in this case, we're talking about on the piece of string, it could be in air for a sound waves, um, or it could be anything. And they're in the same medium and they have the same frequency. So these waves are produced by the same signal generator. So they have the same frequency, for example, 20 Hertz. Now stationary waves form these interesting patterns on that piece of string due to something called superposition, which comes up a lot in physics. It will come up in optics as well. Now superposition means if you combine waves together like this, the amplitude will increase um, because the waves are in phase or their peaks exactly match up. So what we'd say is their amplitude reinforces, uh, the two amplitudes reinforce um, when they are in phase, i.e. the amplitude doubles in this case. Okay. Now another name for that um, kind of similar effect is constructive interference, um, meaning when those two amplitudes reinforce. Now the other thing that can happen is if they are not in phase, if they're out of phase by uh, half a wave, um, then it's called destructive interference and the amplitudes are cancelling. Okay. So um, they are either pi radians out of phase or 180 degrees out of phase, um, meaning that there's a flat line there, there is zero amplitude. So that's why we get these different shapes then. If I talk about the point in the middle where there's um, no uh, amplitude at all that is the point where there's destructive interference occurring because there's no amplitude the wave's not moving whereas the points at either end um, are the opposite they are reinforcing now the points where there's no displacement is called a node n-o-d-e a uh, good way of remembering it node no displacement and the parts where it's maximum displacement is the anti-node so kind of like the opposite Okay, so that's maximum displacement antinodes, and there are two in this image where the wave cab travels at its maximum amplitude. So stationary waves in general um, are very different to regular progressive waves in that not all particles oscillate with the same amplitude. If you're in the ocean and a progressive wave comes past, you go up, you go down, these particles are not like that. The energy is localized and the particles either oscillate with zero amplitude or maximum amplitude or somewhere in the middle, but it doesn't change. And the other examples of these, you might find microwaves, ovens have stationary waves in them, uh, also musical instruments using sound um, and things like that. Okay, so that's our features looked at. Um, let's have a look at what we can describe this shape for, uh, wave here, which is called um, a fundamental frequency. And let's say it's at 10 hertz. Now, another name for this is called the first harmonic, and they mean literally the same thing. And you've got a wave pattern, which is just that one loop. Now, what if I was to double the frequency? Well, in that case, you'd get a shape that has two loops on it, just like the one from earlier, where you've got one node in the middle and two antinodes at either end. Okay, so this doesn't have a fancy name. This is just called the second harmonic uh, when I've got two loops instead of one on the same length of string. If I was to increase the frequency even more, this time to 30 hertz, I'll keep it a number simple here. If I triple the original value of frequency, I'm going to get the third harmonic, which means three loops on my piece of string. I mean, I've got three antinodes, and I've got five um, nodes because I've got one at each end as well. Now, um, you could go on with this, uh, you could talk about the fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, etc. Um, but each time you need to be aware of how many wavelengths there are on the piece of string. Now, up, down, and up again um, is one wavelength, just like on the image. So what that means is that the second harmonic is a whole wavelength, and the third harmonic is actually one and a half wavelengths. And that means our first harmonic is well, half a wavelength overall. So what we can then generally say is the distance between adjacent nodes, so those points of no displacement, is equal to half a wavelength. So if you use that rule, you can do that for any amount of harmonics, even if it's like 15 or something ridiculous like that. Now, let's say we've got the length of this string measured. Um, so generally speaking, uh, we can use our wave speed equation um, to uh, adjust it slightly uh, for stationary waves. So speed equals frequency times wavelength. Here, instead of wavelength, uh, for the fundamental frequency, um, that that is going to equal two times the length, because I'd have to double it to find a full wavelength. 
Now there is a big long equation to work out the fundamental frequency of our stationary waves and it looks a bit like this. So frequency equals 1 over 2L, where L is the length, uh, all in the square root tension divided by mass per unit length. So tension is a force measured in newtons, mass per unit length is in kilograms per meter. The tension is provided by the weights at the end, so almost always that's going to be mg with this particular setup. And it's worth using this equation to be able to work out what the relationships are between these factors. So you could be asked to plug numbers in, so make sure you know how to do that. Um, but examiners love asking with this kind of equation, well, if one thing's changed, how the other things change so let's say the tension goes up by a factor of four how would the fundamental frequency change well if i put this up by a factor of four it's within inside a square root so to find out how much the frequency changes i just do square root of four which means the frequency doubles let's say i was to change the length this time by a factor of four um, how would the frequency change well these two are inversely proportional so four times the length means the frequency goes um, down by a factor of four or by a quarter so that's how that relationship would work Lastly, we're going to talk about is phase. So phase on a stationary wave um, is easy once you get your head around it, but it's a bit different to progressive waves. Let's say I've got these two points here. So these two points are between adjacent nodes, i.e. they're between two nodes. Uh, what is the phase? Well, they're in phase. They're going to go up and down at exactly the same time period, exactly the same um, velocity as each other. So they're in phase. If I've got two particles that have a node between them, um, they are going to be in antiphase. That means it's pi radians or 180 degrees, um, and it means the one goes up, the other goes down, exactly.